Hey everybody, welcome to Dram Daddy Whiskey. I'm Dan, and tonight we're gonna to be trying a whiskey that is probably well known to most of the whiskey nerds, and maybe not so well known to folks who aren't as into bourbon mainly. But that's a rye that we're trying tonight, and in particular, it is a toasted rye whiskey from Nulu. So Nulu is actually a brand owned by Prohibition Craft Spirits. They make all sorts of stuff. They make gin, which I believe they distill on site, tequila, which is under the Nulu brand as well, Nulu Reposado, and then they have their whiskey. I'm pretty sure it's all MGP. Their own website talks about how they get single, barrel, single barrels from MGP, and that's what Nulu is made up of. But if we want to know for sure, we can just look to the bottle. Distilled by MGPI of Indiana. What else does the bottle tell us about this whiskey here? So it's toasted new rye whiskey, non-chill filtered, which is pretty cool. They're not putting this through the process of chill filtration, which takes out a lot of the fatty acid esters. Sometimes that sort of filtration can make this more presentable and it can make things a little less spiky, some of the flavors, but if you want to get the full experience of a whiskey straight from the barrel, you don't want to chill filter it. Proof 114.6, ABV is 57.3. It is a six year old and let's see what it says on the back here. After hand selecting these barrels of MGP rye whiskey, we finish them in a toasted barrel anywhere from one to four weeks. We taste them diligently throughout the finishing process, assuring we offer you a superior finished whiskey. Okay, well, I guess we'll see about that. I don't know the specific mash bill of this whiskey. It's from MGP, chances are it's their 95.5 rye, but I do know that Nulu does get different sorts of mash bills from MGP. I don't know how often they can get different rye whiskey mash bills, um, but I do believe MGP makes some different stuff, even though they're primarily known for the 95.5 rye. What we do know from simply reading the back of the bottle is that after the six years of aging that this rye whiskey went through in the new charred oak barrels, it was finished in a toasted barrel. A toasted barrel is pretty much what it sounds like charred oak barrels they basically flame the inside of the barrel to char it for around a minute uh, they change the amount of time based on the level of char that they want to have on the barrel it can affect the whiskey in different ways but for toasting the barrel's basically baked and when you bake a barrel you can get different types of flavor components that come out of it especially if it is or isn't charred so with this whiskey having been primarily aged in the charred oak barrels and then finished in the toasted oak we are going to get a little bit of the additional influence from that toast usually it's sort of like marshmallowy vanilla-y types of flavors often equated to s'mores let's dive into this one and see what we get see if we can pick up on that toasted finish <laughs> So on the nose, there is a lot of extra, really sugary sweetness up front. Like a marshmallowy or like a cotton candy, but then you get the rye spice as well, and very much in like a baking spice sort of way. Uh, well, maybe you get some of that sort of like fresh piney sense too, but no, not really. This is mainly baking spice, and I don't know if it's the rye itself, because normally with MGP ryes, I do very much get that like fresh piney, minty sort of scent, but with this one, getting a little bit of that, but I'm also getting a lot of baking spice. And I don't know if that's the rye itself or if it's the influence that the toasted barrel is having on the rye. The sweet note you get on this is almost like maybe some kind of cotton candy or like a vanilla frosting on a cupcake or something like that. It smells amazing. Let's give it a taste. So on the palate, you get that classic MGP rye note up front and then it's taken over by the toasted barrel, but in a really good way and it shifts into the sweetness and then the back palate to finish, you're just getting this combination of baking spice and sweetness. Like you're actually eating some kind of awesome cupcake. It's not so spicy as like a gingerbread, but it's not so sweet as like a vanilla cupcake or something like that. There's more to it than both of those things. Wow, the toasted oak combined with the the heavier rye is such a cool combination. Toasted oak gets more common with bourbons these days. It's just kind of blown up where you get these double oak bourbons or these toasted oak bourbons. And it's almost like sweetness on sweetness a little bit because bourbon, you get that sweetness from the corn being the primary grain. And then you get the toasted oak sweetness on top of it. But with the rye, we're getting these really almost like antagonistic notes spice or dill or mint or whatever and then combining that with this extra sweetness not really strong oakiness but just sweetness in like a graham crackery way from the toasted oak it blends so well together at least in this bottle it does it's not like i'm getting one note and then the other they're 
there's a little bit of that, but they're clearly influencing each other or blending in a way that, that works really, really well together and makes something kind of new in a way that's frankly a lot more interesting and a, a lot better than a lot of toasted and double oaked bourbons I've had before. It's really great. You know, picking up on more of the oak itself, you know, the more I get used to this, the more I'm able to pick apart some of it. And so the, the vanilla and, you know, I, I called it, I think like cupcake frosting or something like that. The vanilla and the graham crackeriness and the baking spice that I'm getting on the nose, it's, I'm starting to get that hint of a little bit of like the dryness from the oak, but this still feels just like, you know, rich and sweet and it, it isn't really drying at all. I'm just starting to smell that. Oh, and the spice from it. Man, that's so good. I could drink that all day long. It's freaking delicious. And the nose is great too. Oh, now I'm getting some of that rye. Oh, there's, there's a lot going on with this one in a really, really great way. This is a really great rye whiskey. And what makes it really good, in my opinion, is that it's not bourbon in a toasted oak barrel. It's rye that was put into a toasted oak barrel. It works so well. I don't know if it would work as well with like a Kentucky rye, like a really low rye percentage, just at 51% or something like that. But in what I presume to be a 95.5 rye, it is bonkers good. What score do I give the whiskey in this bottle? A high one. I'd say this is like an 8.6. It is so so good, it's freaking great. If you see a toasted rye, you should definitely pick it up and give it a try, especially if it's not a Kentucky rye. If I was gonna give this a grade based on total price, allocation, all that stuff, I mean, it's a single barrel, but Nulu pumps this stuff out, and I don't mean that in a bad way. They've got a really steady supply of different types of their bourbons and ryes and different types of sort of common-ish finishes. You know, nothing super outlandish like Starlight stuff, but they, they put the stuff out fairly regularly. And if you keep an eye on the websites that they distribute through enough, you're probably gonna find a nice toasted rye at some point, but you might have to keep your eyes out for it. So for this one, which I think with shipping was around a hundred bucks, I would give this an A minus. This is a cast strength, non-chill filtered, toasted finish rye. Everything I just said is something that distilleries or non-distilling producers could just like add dollars on top of for every one of those things because they are more expensive. So the fact that you can get all of those things, including shipping for a hundred bucks or less, that's pretty dang good these days. If you can get a toasted Nulu rye, do it. I've not found a double oaked one. I would definitely like to try that just to see how it compares to see what difference that really makes. But I mean, regardless, if you can find this, just a toasted single barrel Nulu rye at cast strength, do it. It's worth it. It's delicious. But if you've tried this and you think differently, give us another take on it in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you like this video, if you've gotten any value out of it. Uh, it certainly helps me a lot. And I'd love to see you around for the next video. Hope you watch it. So until then, cheers.